The book of Ezekiel, chapter 27 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Now, thou son of man, take up a lamentation for Tyrus, and say unto Tyrus, O thou that art situate at the entry of the sea, which art a merchant of the people for many isles, and here our Father is going to give us an explicit blueprint of Satan's system within the analogy of a ship, a slave ship even, because it enslaves the mind of those that are deceived. Thus saith the Lord God, O Tyrus, the false rock, that is to say, him and his system, thou hast said, I am of perfect beauty, as God will say to Satan, the king of Tyrus, in the next chapter. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, in the garden of God, letting you know exactly who this pertains to. And then if you skip down to verse 15 of chapter 28, it says, Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Satan rebelled in the first world age. The only one sentenced to perish by name. So back to Ezekiel chapter 27 and verse 4. Thy borders are in the midst of the seas. Thy builders have perfected thy beauty. And this word builders is the same word in Genesis chapter 4, verse 17, where it says Cain builded a city. Speaking here of Satan's one world system and the ingredients thereof. They have made all thy shipboards of fir trees of Sinair. They have taken cedars from Lebanon to make mass for thee. Cedars of Lebanon being symbolic of Christendom. Those who were deceived are used to formulate this one world system and to even bring it about in the first place. This is because of biblical illiteracy, those who have not the seal of God in their forehead. Of the oaks of Bashan have they made thine oars. The company of the Asherites have made thy benches of ivory brought out of the isles of Chittim. Now where it says the company of the Asherites, this should really say the branches of the box cedar. It's not a cedar of Lebanon. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We'll find out in the third verse of chapter 31 that Satan exalts himself as a cedar of Lebanon when he's really a T. Asher in the Hebrew, a box tree, a box cedar. So we have here Satan impersonating Christ, ultimately, is what we're talking about. And Chittim, the bruisers, not speaking of God's election here, not this ship that's symbolic of Satan's one world system. In this case, it's the counterfeit chosen ones, that is to say the Kenites, in the same sense that Satan exalts himself as a cedar of Lebanon. He claims to be the tree of life, in other words, when he's really the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the devil. Fine linen embroidered work from Egypt, which is symbolic of bondage, was that which thou spreadest forth to be thy sail. Blue and purple from the isles of Elijah was that which covered thee. A covering as a disguise to make him look like something he's not. The inhabitants of Zidon and Arvad were thy mariners, thy wise men, old Tyrus, that were in thee were thy pilots, speaking again of the Kenites, obviously. The ancients of Gebel and the wise men thereof, remember Genesis chapter 3, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a tree to be desired to make one wise, supposedly, when all Satan does is deceive people, causing them to die spiritually. The ancients of Gebel and the wise men thereof were in thee thy caulkers, that's what keeps the ship from sinking with further deception, damage control we call it nowadays. All the ships of the sea, which is symbolic of people, don't forget that, with their mariners were in thee to occupy their merchandise, to trade with their merchandise, that is to say. They of Persia, that's Iran of today, and we'll see them later on in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39, along with Russia, as well as various other nations in the Battle of the Valley of Hamangog, which takes place at the end of the five-month period. They of Persia and of Lud and of Put were in thine army, thy men of war. They hang the shield and helmet in thee. They set forth thy comeliness. And this includes Libya as well, also mentioned in Ezekiel 38. The men of Arvad with thine army were upon thy walls round about. And the Gamadims were in thy towers. They hang their shields upon thy walls round about. They have made thy beauty perfect. That word Gamadims means warriors. Tarshish was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of all kinds of riches, including souls of men, as we covered in the last chapter, this 27th chapter being a parallel of Revelation 18 as well. 
With silver, iron, tin, and lead, they traded in thy fares. Remember Daniel's fourth beast, the supernatural ingredient, has great iron teeth. And that's the key to understanding the five-month-long hour of temptation. The one-world political system doesn't emerge until Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth. Javan, and that's the he-goat of Daniel chapter 8. You'll see that it's called Grisha there, but that's the same word as Javan. Tubal, which is Tobolsk, and Meshech, which is Moscow. And we'll see these words in Ezekiel 38 as well. Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, they were thy merchants. They traded the persons of men and vessels of brass in thy market. So there we have the leopard and the bear of Daniel chapter 7. With Javan, the he-goat, written of in Daniel chapter 8, as well as Tubal and Meshech, that is to say the bear nation, Rosh, Russia, Esau, the communistic atheistic system. Again, this is a blueprint of Satan's one world system. We're not talking about the Christians of Russia or anywhere else. They of the house of Tagorma, that's Armenia, also mentioned in Ezekiel 38, traded in thy fares with horses and horsemen and mules. There's those horsemen again. The men of Dedan were thy merchants. Many isles were the merchandise of thine hand. They brought thee for a present horns of ivory and ebony. Those ten horns you have to figure into the equation as well. The ten fallen angel kings that are cast out of heaven with Satan. And here we have horns mentioned. You could also attribute this to the four hidden dynasties symbolized by horns as well which are symbolic of external power, external enemies in this case, and you'll find them symbolized by horns in Zechariah chapter 1, the four hidden dynasties. Syria was thy merchant by reason of the multitude of the wares of thy making. They occupied in thy fairs with emeralds, purple, embroidered work, and fine linen, and coral, and agate. Judah and the land of Israel they were thy merchants. They traded in thy market wheat of Meneth and Panag and honey and oil and balm. Panag means sweet, which deception always is, and Mimeth means distribution, distributing the deception. Satan will appear in the land of Judea. Damascus, which is the capital of Syria, was thy merchant in the multitude of the wares of thy making. For the multitude of all riches in the wine of Helban and white wool. And as we watch the one world system formulate what's going on right now over in Damascus, Damascus was thy merchant in the multitude of the wares of thy making. Leading up to that woe of the fifth trumpet whenever that one world system emerges. The political first, then that's wounded to death, and then the religious when Satan appears as the false Christ. Dan also, and this is V-Dan in the Hebrew, not Dan as in one of the 12 tribes, but a place in Arabia, and Javan, there's Javan again, the he-goat, not a geographical location, but symbolic of the Kenites going to and fro, occupied in thy fairs, bright iron, there's iron again, Cassia and Calamus were in thy market, Dedan was thy merchant in precious clothes for chariots, those vehicles, Arabia, and all the princes of Kedar, they occupied with thee in lambs and rams and goats, there's the goats, and these were thy merchants. And Kedar was one of the sons of Ishmael, who will be confederate with Esau, not only in this one world system, but at the end of the five month period, whenever Esau comes against Jacob in the Battle of the Valley of Haman Gog, which transpires at the exact same time as the Battle of Armageddon that you can read of in Revelation chapter 19. The merchants of Sheba and Rayama, they were thy merchants. They occupied in thy fairs with chief of all spices and with all precious stones and gold. Enumerate those stones who aren't smooth over a long period of time. Haran and Kalna and Eden, the merchants of Sheba, Asher and Kilmad were thy merchants. These were thy merchants in all sorts of things, in blue clothes, embroidered work, and in chests of rich apparel, bound with cords and made of cedar among thy merchandise. The ships of Tarshish did sing of thee in thy market, and thou wast replenished, and made very glorious in the midst of the seas, which are symbolic of people. Thy rowers have brought thee 
Into great waters the east wind hath broken thee in the midst of the seas. The east wind sometimes being synonymous with locusts. Don't forget about that locust army during that five-month period, which are exclusively Satan's angels. Thy riches and thy fares, thy merchandise, thy mariners, and thy pilots, thy caulkers, and the occupiers of thy merchandise, the traders of thy merchandise, rather, and all thy men of war that are with thee, and in all thy company, which is in the midst of thee, shall fall into the midst of the seas in the day of thy ruin. The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of thy pilots. This is when they say, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon is fallen, Babylon meaning confusion, and all that handle the oar, the mariners, and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships, they shall stand upon the land, and shall cause their voice to be heard against thee, and shall cry bitterly, Babylon, Babylon, that great city, and shall cast up dust upon their heads, they shall wallow themselves in the ashes, and they shall make themselves utterly bald for thee, and gird them with sackcloth, and they shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart, and with bitter wailing. Again, Revelation 18, read it, and in their wailing, they shall take up a lamentation for thee, and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. When thy wares went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. And as it's written in Revelation chapter 18, beginning with verse 9, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication, and lived deliciously with her, with the whore of Babylon, shall bewail her and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, which means confusion, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come, at the end of the hour of temptation. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. And to skip down to verse 15, The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, remember that from Ezekiel 27, and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones, we saw that as well, and pearls, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught, going into another dimension even at the seventh trumpet, all flesh being done away with, all material possession, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, which is exactly what it said in Ezekiel 27, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea, by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. At the end of that hour of temptation, upon the return of the true Christ, Satan's one world system, as well as his role of Antichrist, are destroyed forever and ever at that time. The Kenites will cease to be, because there's no such thing as a Kenite in the spiritual body. That's a thing of the flesh as well, because they're hybrids, but all are changed into spiritual bodies at the seventh trumpet. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And returning to Ezekiel chapter 27, and to repeat verse 32, And in their wailing they shall take up a lamentation for thee, and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? When thy wares went forth out of the seas, thou fillest many people. Thou didst enrich the kings of the earth with the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas in the depths of the waters, thy merchandise and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall forever. All the inhabitants of the isles shall be astonished at thee, and their kings shall be sore afraid, and they shall be troubled in their countenance. The merchants among the people shall hiss at thee, Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more.